Y'all know what's going on. It's time for another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker. Check it out, y'all. This is part two of You Reap What You Sow. In part one, I was telling you about Randy, right? Randy was set to testify against some guys that, you know what I'm saying, he was selling drugs for, right? And during the process of him waiting to go to court, he was on max with me. And while he was on max, his food got poisoned. So, well, it's not poisoned to the point where there's something that, that they put in, it was glass that was put in the food. And the glass was put in the food by this dude named Bobby, right? Bobby had nothing to do with the case other than he was friends with the dudes that Randy was going to be testifying against, right? And, you know, they had asked him to try to influence the outcome by getting dude not to testify against them. But Randy wasn't trying to hear that. So Bobby stepped it up a little bit and decided that he was going to do something to take him all the way out. It didn't work. But... Still, he didn't testify, but he went to court, prepared to testify, but ran, I mean, uh, but the, the guys that Randy was going to testify against, all of them ended up pleading out uh, to lesser charges and still going to prison anyway, right? So he never actually testified, but he was prepared to do so. But nonetheless, he still suffered some very serious consequences just because he was prepared to testify. But again, like I said, this story isn't about Randy because Bobby said something to me the other day. I'm here with Bobby, right? And of course, all of you know that Randy and Bobby are not the real names of the guys. I don't do that. I do not do that because I don't want to put anybody on blast and, and all of this old kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, Bobby spoke to me the other day. Uh, I hadn't seen him in years. And he, he's here at the hospital. He's sick. And he was talking about his illness and things like that. And it made me think back to what he had done, right? And that's why I say this story is, is, is about Bobby, right? But check it out, y'all. This is going to be a good one. This is part two of You Read What You Sow. Now look here, Bobby is down here sick. I'm going to tell you what he's in here and sick for in a few minutes, right? But let's just go over a little bit, you know what I'm saying, some of the psychological aspects of what he did. When you're locked up in here, you get caught up in that mindset that it's this code that you live by, and if everybody follows this code, that criminals will all be able to do what we want to do, right? But it's something about that code that it never holds true. Why? Because you're running, you're, you're, you're functioning, you're operating in darkness. And when you're operating in darkness, think about this, y'all. When you're operating in darkness, you can't see what you're doing, you can't see where you're going, you can't even see who you're dealing with, right? So you're bumping into everything. It's just like when you get up in the middle of the night and, you, and you're not fully awake and you're on your way to the restroom or something like that or the baby's crying and you hit your toe on something or you hit your knee or you bump into something, right? It's like, that's what the criminal world is like. It's like navigating a world in darkness. You never know what you're going to bump into. So Bobby, he had drank the Kool-Aid. He was fully committed to this mindset of darkness. So he thought that what he was doing was the right thing. Don't testify. Don't say nothing. You knew what you were doing. You knew the choices that you made. But what he didn't factor in is that this individual was functioning off of something that has been in every human being from the beginning of time. Self-preservation. Fight or flight. And in his situation, he characterized it, Randy, characterized this as fighting. He wanted to be able to live his life not spending 30 years or more in prison before he got out. He wanted to go on and live his life, even though he had been wrong by selling a drug. But he had been offered an opportunity to not spend that amount of time in prison. So he took it. And because of this criminal code, everybody looked at that like, you wrong. What do you think about that? Do y'all think he's wrong? Do you think he's wrong for wanting to live? Do you think he's wrong for wanting to not spend the next 30 years in prison? Don't forget, he was already on paper. 12, 15 years. Do you think that he should have kept his mouth shut? Let me know what you think about that. 
But anyway, back to the story. But here's the thing. Randy decided that he was going to do what was best for Randy. And that's what I mean about this darkness in the game. See, people in the game want you to go by this code because it's benefiting them. When it's beneficial to them, they want you to do it. When it's not beneficial to them, they're not going to do it. I don't care who you are. You keep thinking what you want to. I know plenty of people in the penitentiary been in here for 20, 30 years. They say, Joe T, if I had the chance to do it all over again, I'd tell it. I'd tell it. Because I want to go home. They regret the decision that they made. They regret it. And you need to wake up to that and understand that. And just don't do it. Don't put yourself in a situation like that, like what Randy did, and like so many other people in the penitentiary sitting in here boohooing and crying about their circumstances when they had an opportunity to get it right, to do the right thing. They said no because they wanted to live by some stupid code that don't even make sense unless you're the one that's going to benefit from it. You want somebody else to sacrifice their life, their well-being, because they broke the law with you. Because they broke the law with you. They should hold their tongue when they've been given an opportunity to do what's best for them. <laughs> Keep on fooling yourself and thinking that you want to. Just pure nonsense. But anyway, let me get back to the story. I keep on drifting off. Y'all know how I do. Get to run in my mouth. I'm all the way on something else. But here's the thing with Bobby. Bobby pulled up on me the other day. And I'm looking at him. And he got this thing wrapped around his stomach. I'm like, what's wrong with you, man? Hey, first of all, Spark, how you doing? Long time no see, all that. We went through all that, right? And uh, he was like, man, we had some times down at uh, on Max, didn't we? And I'm sitting there, I said, yeah, 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 you know, we did some things. There was a lot going on down there. But I'm looking at him like, I really wasn't nothing going on with me and him. You know what I'm saying? I was in my own world. You know what I mean? I knew he was there. I heard about what he was doing. He's shaking the spot a little bit. But I never did any business with him. I never had any associated with him. I never really talked to him out on the ball, on the rec pen, you know, when we was locked in out there. But he, in his mind, we all buddies now. And I figured it was like that because when I was looking at him, I'm still healthy and he's broke down. And in his mind, he's probably feeling threatened because Bobby wasn't a good dude. So now he's trying to act like he's this good dude that's learned his lessons and all this and that, right? And he probably has. I'm not going to dismiss that. We all grow and change. And that should be acknowledged. But guess what, y'all? Bobby had cancer. When I talked to him and he told me he had cancer, I said, man, I hate that for you, man. You know what I mean? I said, what kind you got? And he said, stomach cancer. His intestines. And look, the first thing that popped in my mind was, mm, boy, 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 karma is a mother. Because remember, Bobby put that glass in Randy's food and they had to cut out Randy's intestines. Now, again, don't get me wrong. I'm a firm believer that you can't pick when trouble comes and you don't get to, and most of the time, karma don't come back in the exact same way that you put it out there, right? You put out negative energy, it's negative energy to come back. But that was the way my mind was working. I'm like, dang. He did something to cause this young man to have to get his intestines cut out. Now he has a stomach cancer where he's going to have to get his intestines cut out. Ain't that something? Ain't that something, y'all? So while I'm talking to him, I'm looking at his face, and he looks broke down. Broke down, beaten, and weak. He's nowhere near the person that he was physically. And he's talking to him, and you know, we ended up talking about the most high. You know, and how God works and stuff like that. But throughout that whole first conversation that we had, he never said one word about Randy or anything like that. He only talked about how he had changed and how he had grown. But he never talked about the people that he had harmed and how he was sorry if he was sorry or had he reached out to him. I wondered about all of that, right? So before I did this episode, I went back to him. I said, let me talk to you for a second, Bobby. And he was like, yeah. So we sat down. Now, keep in mind now, you know, uh, he was in a wheelchair this day. The other day I talked to him, he just walked slow. But this day he's in a wheelchair. I don't know if he had 
got in treatment to come back. I don't know. But anyway, when I was talking to him, I said, uh, I said, man, I ain't trying to bring up no bad stuff, right? But I'm, I said, I'm curious, man, you know, because I be doing my shows and stuff. I said, do you ever think about Randy? And check this out, y'all. He didn't even remember Randy. He remembered the incident, but he didn't even remember the guy's name. He did not remember his name. And I'm like, yeah, man. Dude, that we, you know, at the prison that we were at, that you, look, I almost said the name of the prison. But anyway, y'all going to figure that out. Anyway, it was at River Bend, okay? But anyway, <laughs> that's the only place I was on max. Uh, so anyway, and uh, he said, man, I remember the incident, but not the individual. And uh, I said, man, do you ever think that is connected to what's going on with you now? And he looked at me. And he said, no, nah, I never thought about that, man. He said, uh, but it might be. It might be. I said, if you could reach out to him, would you? And he was like, yeah, I would, man. Now that you say that, I would. I'd tell him I'm sorry. And I was wrong. I'm, not, I'm like, what, what are you sorry about, though? He said, man, I'm sorry for believing that treating people the way I treated him would make a difference. He said, man, I was trying to do something for some people that I knew to keep them from being accepting responsibility for what they did. Now, that blew me off my socks right there, y'all, because I wasn't even trying to push that on him. I just wanted to know what he thought. And he said, man, at the end of the day, if there was anything that I could do to make my situation better, I would have done it too. He said, man, I've been locked up in and out, back and forth in prison for the last 30 years. And he said, man, it took me having to get put in this chair to realize that how stupid I, I've been. And I said, you ain't just saying that because you're sick. He's like, nah. He said, I've been feeling like that for a few years. He said, but, you know, I ain't been around you. You know what I'm saying? So you wouldn't know. You might think I'm just acting like this now. He said, but I've been feeling like this for a few years. He said, man, life is too short. I said, so tell me about what's going on with you, man. He said, man, I'm going through chemo. I'm doing that. And he said they probably they said they probably have to, you know what I'm saying, remove some of my intestines, you know. And I'm like, wow, man. I said, I wish you the best. I really do. I wish you the best. I said, what you been doing the past few years, you know what I'm saying? And before he got sick, before he got diagnosed, he told me, he said he had been doing the same things that he had always been doing. Drinking, smoking, doing everything and anything to make this experience in here one that he can tolerate. That's what he had been doing. But that's what had benefited him. Now he's sick and he looks bad, y'all. I'm telling you, he looks real bad. But that's what happens to you when you live that lifestyle. I'm not saying that if you live a, a good life, a righteous life, a virtuous lifestyle, that nothing is going to happen to you. Trouble is going to come to all of our doorsteps. It's just a matter of what team are you on when the trouble comes. Are you on the team of righteousness, Yahshua, the Most High? Or are you on the team of Satan, the Dark One? Because the, the, what's going to play out in your life, you know what I'm saying, is going to play out. But how you deal with it is going to be determined on what team you're on. So just remember that, y'all. I just wanted to drop that on you, right? Because you reap what you sow. We all do. We all do. I got a lot of stuff out there that ain't came back to me yet that I recognize. But here's the thing. I invite it. Because when it does happen, I want to recognize it in the moment. Not like Bobby. He didn't catch it until after we talked. That, he, that it could be that. But I want to catch it in that moment. And recognize what's going on with me because karma comes back not to hurt but to heal. Remember that. Karma comes back not to hurt but to heal. Sometimes it feels rough because it is rough because it's what we put out is what we're going to get back. So remember that, y'all. This has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and I say peace, y'all. <laughs>